Hello. Post-processing is essentially any steps you take to modify an image after rendering. It's the finishing spice you add before posting your render to Instagram or ArtStation, but it's not just one technique. So let's talk about it. Here's my base render. Let's bring it into Blender's compositor and plug it into the output. Any nodes we add in between will adjust the final look. If you want to see what you're doing, add a viewer node and enable the backdrop. Press Alt-V to zoom in and V to zoom out. Hold Alt and press the middle mouse button to pan around the image. Blender's compositor can be slow at times. You can open the side panel and enable OpenCL, lower the chunk size, and adjust the edit quality to help speed things up. This video is just an introduction to the compositor, so I won't be talking about render layers here. Render layers offer a lot of additional control over the changes we want to make, but for now we'll keep things simple. The first thing I usually do with a render is try to break up the straight lines. You can do this with beveling or adjusting vertices, but since this is a post-processing video, let's assume we don't have access to the raw blend file anymore. We can still soften sharp edges if we blur them slightly. Real camera lenses are never perfectly sharp anyway, so let's throw a blur node after the image and use a low blur amount like 2 pixels. When adding these effects, it's important to keep the order of our nodes in mind. Anything involved with the lens or camera sensor should be before filters and colour grading. You can add a glow effect, similar to the one in Eevee, by adding a glare node. However, I want a more specific type of glow for this image, known as halation. Halation is quite a complicated effect that involves saturating skin tones and some other bits and pieces. To make a simple emulation, I'm going to split the red, green and blue channels, blur the red channel, then recombine them all. To make it only affect the highlights of the image, I'll use a colour ramp and plug it into the size socket of the blur node. Make sure variable size is checked. Finally, I'll use a colour balance node to add some reds to the midtones of the image. We can group all of these nodes together with Ctrl G, and use the tab key to jump in and out of the group. Next, I'm adding a lens distortion node to gently warp the edges of the image. Check the fit box, and make sure you don't overdo the distortion. I recommend rendering at a 10% larger resolution, if you know you'll be using lens distortion. That way you won't have to use fit, which stretches the image artificially. Because I want an old school film look, I'm going to add some film grain and a letterbox overlay. There's free film grain packs online, I'll link some in the description. Just drag the image or video into the compositor, and plug it into the bottom socket of a mix node. Set the blending mode to overlay and adjust the strength. You can add an exposure node after the grain if it's darkening the image too much. In my case, I'm going to use my new add-on grainy to quickly generate my own grain, and composite it with one click. Next I'll add a letterbox using the same process, just import the image and set the blend mode. You can use a scale node to adjust the aspect ratio. Overlays can really level up the believability of an image, and the same technique applies for all kinds of things like lens dirt, dust, scratches, and VHS effects. Let's try some colour grading. Colour grading is an entire profession in itself, so I won't attempt to cover it all in a single video. For the broad strokes, I open the scopes in the side panel, and use a combination of colour balance, brightness contrast, RGB curves, hue saturation value and various blending modes to tweak the colours of the image until I achieve the look I'm aiming for. In this case I'm using a colour balance node to add some teals to the shadows, and some warmth to the midtones and highlights, followed by a curves node to recreate the classic film S-curve. When colour grading, make sure you're using an appropriate file format and bit depth. You can push the colours of a 32-bit EXR far more than an 8-bit JPEG with compression. If you're using Blender 4.0 or later, you'll have access to the AGX colour space, which has a slightly more natural look than Filmic. There's a few tricks you can do with blending modes to modify the image. For example, blurring the image and blending it on top using the overlay node can add some more contrast to the shot. You can also tint a specific tone range of the image by using the lighten, darken, or colour blending modes. To remove a colour, use the Divide mode. Blender also has a variety of filter nodes that can help sharpen the image. I usually reach for Diamond Sharpen because it's a bit more subtle. Because the sharpening is at the end of our pipeline, it will apply to everything before it, including the grain. Be careful not to overdo it. One last little trick I sometimes do is use Stable Diffusion to add some painterly brush strokes to the image. You can do this in a local Stable Diffusion environment, or use the Dream Textures add-on. I'll make a dedicated video for this technique soon. Here's the before and after. 
Post-processing can really open up a lot of opportunities for fine-tuning the render, and the pipeline is different every time. Hopefully this video has helped explain some of the steps I personally take when processing my own work. If you find this content valuable, please like and subscribe so I know to make more. Thanks everyone, I hope you found the video helpful.